How's it going everyone? I'm Adam Molina. So it's 2018, let's be honest, most smartphones are nearly perfect when it comes to audio. But nearly perfect isn't perfect. And if you take audio seriously, it's good to know which phone is gonna do what you want. So in this video, we're gonna go over the five best smartphones you can get if audio is important to you. And if you're curious as to how we got these results, stick around to the end of the video because I'll be quickly explaining all of it. All right, let's get into it. So the five phones are the LG V30, the Galaxy S9 Plus, the Google Pixel 2 XL, the Nokia 8, yeah, I know I do four weird, and the Razer phone. Let's start there. So if you're all in on this wireless future, the phone you're gonna want is the Razer phone. It was recently updated to Android 8.1, which means that it now comes with all of the Bluetooth codec goodies that come baked into Oreo. You'll get AppDeX, AppDeX HD, and LDAC for Bluetooth streaming, along with dual front-facing speakers. Now the glaring downside is that this phone is lacking a headphone jack, and even though it was to stuff in a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, it's still a pretty big inconvenience. But to try and make up for that, the dongle that comes with the Razer phone does give it Dolby Atmos support. So if you don't go the wireless route and end up plugging in a pair of headphones, at least you get something for your troubles. So if you already have a high-end pair of wired headphones or are thinking of getting one in the near future, there's really only one option for you, the LG V30. Audiophiles love the LG V30 for a reason, and that reason is the headphone jack. Not only is that in itself in a plus these days, but this phone also has a quad DAC inside that supports 32-bit audio and an amp that can power a pretty high-end pair of headphones. It also outputs a signal that's stronger than any other phone on the market, and it has support for AppDeX HD, which is the next best codec for Bluetooth streaming after Sony's LDAC. Not to mention that if you do plug in a pair of headphones, the harmonic distortion was the lowest we tested in any smartphone, at 0.0009%. Now because both the phone and the headphones need to have LDAC for the codec to work, the lack of LDAC compatibility shouldn't really be a problem for you, unless you already own a pair of expensive Bluetooth Sony headphones like the WH-1000X Mark IIs. During testing, some of the only issues we found with this phone are well beyond human hearing, which is why they make music sound so damn good. One con to be aware of though is that the speakers on this thing are pretty weak. In our testing, the output maxes out at 71 decibels, making this the weakest speakers on any of the phones that we tested. And then we have the Galaxy S9 Plus, Samsung's latest and greatest. Now it wasn't the best in any one category, but it scored well enough to compete, and let's be real, it has a headphone jack. It too supports 32-bit audio and is Dolby Atmos certified when you plug in a pair of headphones. The Razer phone does this too, to be fair, but the S9 does it without a stupid dongle. It takes the prize home for best processing just because of that. Again, the speakers here aren't the best, and the Dolby Atmos that you get on them won't be as impressive as they are with headphones, but it's still something that the other phones don't have. You also have the option to customize the frequency response on a system level, which is useful for cutting out frequencies that you physically can't hear anyway. And then of course we have Google's flagship, the Pixel 2 XL, which made this list even without a headphone jack. As Gary would say, let me explain. The Google Pixel 2 XL is on this list not because of its front-facing speakers, which were the second loudest out of any that we tested at 74.4 decibels, or even because the dongle surprisingly has a noise floor that was basically identical to the headphone jack of the LG V30 at negative 101.4 decibels versus negative 101.6 decibels. No, it's here for the same reason that it's one of the best phones to get, period. It's first in line for updates coming straight from Google. And while that may not seem like a huge deal right now, Pixel owners will be the first to get any updates or software tweaks that will make the audio experience even better. It's also compatible with all of the Bluetooth codecs, except for Samsung HD, which is exclusive to the Galaxy. The only thing that would make this phone objectively better is if it actually had a decent headphone jack, which I'm never gonna let go, so just deal with it. So if you don't feel like spending nearly $1,000 on a smartphone, I can't really blame you. So we also have a bang for your buck pick, which goes to the Nokia 8, because despite its low price tag, it surprised us with how well it held up in our testing. Not only does it have some impressive speakers that gets up to 74 decibels in volume, but it also has a headphone jack with a noise floor that was on par with the likes of the Google Pixel 2 dongle and even the headphone jack of the LG V30. Throw in the fact that it now has Android Oreo, which gives it AppDex, AppDex HD, AAC, and LDAC compatibility, and it's well worth the asking price, especially when that price is usually around 400 US dollars. So how did we get these results? Well, lucky for us, we have the latest and greatest technology at our disposal, a Scarlet 2i2 interface. Okay, okay, not that impressive, but you'd be surprised the information you can get out of this thing with the right software. 
Using a 3.5 millimeter to a quarter inch TRS connector Y cable, we were able to connect each phone to a top secret piece of software called Audio Write Mark. It's actually a free piece of software that you can download yourself. If you're thinking this is overly simple, you're right, it is. There's a lot you can learn by simply playing a 96 kilohertz 24 bit test file and then recording and comparing the results. We could have tested with higher bitrate files, but to be honest, there's really no point. We chose something that would meet or exceed CD quality, which is 44.1 kilohertz and 16 bit, because at the moment, no streaming service even does 32 bit audio. And that's how most people are gonna be listening to music anyway. Now, as far as testing speakers go, unfortunately we don't have access to an anechoic chamber, but if you can get me in one, let me know so I could scratch that off my bucket list. So we were only really able to provide a gross sound pressure level measurement, or SPL, by playing a pink noise file on max volume off of each phone at a distance of one meter from one of these guys, a decibel reader. Overall, the front facing speakers on these phones were better than the bottom firing ones, but either way, all speakers across the board pretty much sucked. If you want good audio out of these phones, grab a pair of headphones. So when we start talking about wired performance, this is a little bit easier to understand, but harder to hear. Data aside, all of these phones sound pretty damn good, more than enough for the average person, and unless you've spent years training your ears to pick up the smallest differences in air pressure, you won't be able to really say that one is loads better than the other. Now with that out of the way, that's why we have data. In wired headphones, lower distortion and a lower noise floor are better for the final product that reaches your ears. In that same vein, the lower the deviation found in testing the frequency response, the less your audio will be altered before you get a chance to hear it. And at the end of all of this testing, you get this chart comparing the phones. So one thing that's worth mentioning is that phones with dongles like the Google Pixel 2 XL and even the iPhone 10 refuse to output sound at a specified sample rate. Why? No idea, but with three different people doing these tests individually, we got more or less the same results. The good news is that these phones should have an easier time getting rid of distortion. The trade-off is that it technically isn't performing as well. While the average person streaming music or YouTube videos won't be able to tell, ultra hardcore wired listening only audiophiles might not be satisfied with this. Which is fine because chances are that type of person should avoid dongles if they're using power hungry headphones anyway. Now the last piece of testing was the Bluetooth codex, which was actually super easy as the companies explicitly state which codex they're using, which gave us this chart comparing them so you can see which phones have what you're looking for. So there you have it. If you care about audio, those are the top five smartphones you can get that won't let you down. I'm Adam Molina, thanks for watching, and make sure to follow us on social media if you're not already. We have Instagram and Twitter, and also hit the notification bell down there, so you'll be the first to know every time we upload a new video, because we are your source for all things Android.